Hello everyone and welcome to a game a lot of people are talking about ever since it was played yesterday uh, in the grand finale of the Spain's Got Talent. Uh, it's Ray Enigma versus uh, former world chess champion Anatoly Karpov uh, and um, uh, to, to my understanding as the whole thing is in Spanish and I've, I've uh, seen Ray Enigma on Twitter and on other social media for the past like maybe year and a half. Uh, the thing is, no one knows who he is. Uh, so he's been going around everywhere playing chess, you know, taking photos with people. And, uh, well, he, he's just a very interesting individual. And we don't know who he or she, uh, you know, is. And uh, I know you guys are probably thinking, oh, it's probably young Misha. He came to exact his revenge on Karpov. But, uh, no, Misha is still very young. And uh, I don't think it's Max Deutsch. I know a lot of you guys are thinking it's Max Deutsch, but I don't think it is. Uh, because if you check out his Twitter, everything is in Spanish. So that could be, you know, sort of a trick to uh, fool everyone. But, uh, you know, until proven otherwise, I'm going uh, with uh, he's definitely Spanish. And, uh, well, as he is incredibly strong in chess, uh, he's obviously uh, uh, one of the Spanish grandmasters. But, uh, you know, it could really be anyone. Now, I don't, I don't think it's been revealed who he is, uh, as I haven't found any information on that on the internet. But even if you guys know, don't share in the comments, you know, uh, let it uh, remain a mystery. So, um, yeah, to my understanding, again, as uh, the, the video is in Spanish, I will put a link to it. You can check it out even before watching the analysis because it's just, you know, uh, very, very, very powerful stuff. Uh, you know, it's three minute blitz game. Uh, and, you know, everything is just fl flying off the board. So in order to understand the game a little bit better, maybe you should also check out the, the video. Uh, but I don't think uh, uh, Ray here knew that he was going to face Karpov uh, in the finals of this uh, Spain's Got Talent edition because when um, uh, a, a, dif uh, a, a different individual sat across uh, him over the board and then he just stood up and then, you know, uh, lights started flashing, fire started, you know, uh, going all, all, all around the uh, <laughs> And uh, Anatoly Karpov just uh, walked through the door and, you know, uh, Enigma was a very, uh, well, he seemed very surprised that he was going to face Karpov uh, over the board now. Uh, but if you guys have any more insight on this, do share in the comments. Uh, I will, uh, you know, like and uh, and uh, pin it for, for everyone else to see. Now, let's check out the game. And uh, for those of you who have already seen the video, uh, enjoy, in, enjoy the analysis because, uh, well, you might think it's, uh, you know, some sort of a weird game that, where nothing is happening, but it's actually... Uh, a very very correct game so let's check it out uh, enigma with the white pieces opens with d4 uh, we have knight to f6 knight to f3 and now e6 we have e3 so going for the uh, yusuf of rubinstein system of the indian game and now usually uh, players just go b6 bishop to b7 and continue playing as the bishop will be very well placed on this diagonal but karpov uh, as he's very sneaky plays bishop to e7 he's checking if uh, ray really knows his stuff uh, we have bishop to d3, and now only now b6. We have knight b to d2, and uh, Karpov strikes in the center with c5. We have c3, uh, defending the center, and now bishop to b7, placing the bishop on this long diagonal. Queen to e2, and here Karpov trades uh, once in the center. We have c captures, e captures, uh, and now both players castle. So castles, castles, and d6 now by Karpov. We have rook to e1. Uh, interestingly, this has all been played before, so you can uh, be sure that Ray Enigma is a very, very strong um, uh, player. We have a6 and now a4, stopping b5. Uh, knight b to d7 uh, and now there are some games where knight to f1 was played also. Knight to g5 is a known move, but here uh, Ray plays h3 and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Karpov meets this. He plays rook to e8. Uh, and okay, uh, we have knight to c4 now, putting pressure uh, on some pawns here, and queen to c7. Karpov just develops the queen, connects the rooks, uh, and now bishop to g5. White also continues development. We have h6, bishop to h4, and now knight to d5. Karpov offers a trade of bishops uh, as he, he plays the bishop on e7 for a very good reason, it would seem. Uh, bishop captures on e7, knight captures, and now knight f to d2. Uh, asking uh, Karpov, what do you what do you do here? So here, Karpov goes knight to d5, an excellent square for the knight, very centralized. And here we have queen to g4. So already trying to put some pressure on the position, maybe some queen to e4 to h7 ideas are possible, uh, but not very likely, as the knight can easily 
uh, just return to, to f6. And here, uh, an aggressive player might uh, just, you know, barge in with, with e5, but not Karpov. He just plays knight 7 to f6, improves his position a little bit. Queen to h4 as the queen was attacked. And only now when all of Karpov's pieces are nicely placed. Okay, you could maybe bring the rook into the game before that, but uh, Karpov uh, strikes on the queen side with b5. We have eight captures, eight captures, and now... The problem is uh, your knight is attacked and uh, white decides to capture the rook here. Now, I will uh, again remind everyone this is a three minute blitz game. So three minutes plus zero seconds increment. So you can't really think all that much. Uh, but the, the absolute best move for white here is knight to a3. But it's... Um, not uh, maybe all that all that great because Karpov can play knight captures on c3, b captures, queen captures, you grab some pawns and you're going to win back your piece. So it's, uh, you know, for example, bishop captures, you attack the rook and now, well, it's just a completely crazy position, but it, it, it is okay for white. However, white played rook captures on a8, we have rook captures on a8 and now it's still the same idea, knight to e3, your knight is hanging here, you have to move it, knight to e3. Only the problem is Karpov doesn't capture on c3. Uh, he instead goes for rook to a2. And uh, okay, it's a three minute blitz game. You don't want to uh, ca over calculate and then, you know, realize that it leads to nothing. So he just improves his position. And now he has well placed knights. His bishop is incredible here. His rook is putting pressure on white's position. So this is uh, a real Karpovian chess. We have knight to d1 defending the pawn. And now bishop to c6, defending his b5 pawn, uh, we have knight to e4, offering a trade of knights, and here Karpov trades, captures, captures, now the queen uh, is trying to get to that h7 square, so just knight f6, attacks the queen and opens up this bishop's diagonal. So queen back to e2, the queen now also defends the pawn, so maybe the knight can be activated, Queen to b7, putting pressure on the g2 pawn, and now knight to e3. Luckily, now the queen defends the pawn, and the knight defends the g2 pawn. And now, uh, again, as all of Karpov's pieces are nicely placed, he uh, executes another strike on the queen side with b4, trying to weaken white's uh, setup here. And of course, you can't really allow captures here, because you will not be able to recapture. So here, c4, uh, we have queen to b6, as Karpov created a weakness, now Karpov attacks the weakness. We have bishop to b1, first forcing the rook to move, rook back to a8, and now rook to d1, defending the pawn, uh, and the Karpov pushes b3. Uh, interestingly, this is already moved 30, this is a 3 plus 0 blitz game, and the game is still completely equal. If you put this uh, into any engine, it will give you a 0, 0, 0, but of course, uh, that uh, is of uh, little interest when you have like a minute on the clock. So here we have d5. Uh, uh, striking in the center, we have e captures, c captures, attacking the bishop here, and bishop to b5. Now the queen is attacked, queen to f3, uh, defending the pawn, and also trying to get the knight to f5. If the knight gets to f5, it's going to attack a lot of important squares here. Of course, Karpov knows this, and he plays bishop back to d7. He doesn't want to allow knight to f5. So here, knight to g4, and now Karpov trades. Bishop captures on g4, h captures, and now another weakness has been created, so Karpov attacks. It. Queen to b4, just attacking that pawn. Bishop to f5, defending it, and now rook to e8. Uh, now some maybe rook to e1 ideas uh, may, may be possible. So king to h2, and now uh, we have rook to e5. Again, uh, tactically g6 works perfectly fine here. You can just kick away the bishop and win a pawn. Uh, even if bishop captures and g6 threatening queen captures and f6, you can play knight captures and g4 with check first. And after the king moves only then capture, and you will still have a better position, but uh, Karpov doesn't like opening up his king like that. So he just improves the position with rook to e5, puts more pressure on this pawn here, and now asks what do you do. We have rook to d3, going after the b3 pawn, and now queen to c5. So Karpov will give up this pawn, but it doesn't uh, look like he got all that much in return. Rook captures on b3, and now you don't want to allow rook to b8, the bishop is covering h7, so he has to go back, rook to e8, and now we have rook to c3. Attacking the queen, queen d4, and now b3. So now you can move the rook, the b2 pawn will not be hanging, and well, now white is up a pawn, and it's a passed b pawn, and those can be incredibly dangerous. So here, knight captures on d5, uh, grabbing the pawn back, and now rook to d3. 
uh, attacking the queen. So queen e5 check, we have queen to g3, and now Karpov has to decide what to do. There are plenty of moves you can play here, for example, knight to f6, you can play g6, you can play king to f8, so uh, all of those are fine moves. But knight to f4, the move Karpov played, is not a good move because it uh, loses on the spot. However, uh, again, I have to uh, point out that this is a 3 plus 0 blitz game and players are incredibly low on the clock, seconds are on the clock, and uh, Ray misses his chance of rook to e3. It just wins the game on the spot. You can't move the queen because captures rook and the bishop covers h7. This is checkmate. And of course, if you move it here to defend the rook, well, then we just trade, captures, captures, and you pick up the knight. And it's game over. But white is up a piece, that's it. However, uh, in the uh, this terrible time skirmish rook to f3 was played and no it was not a mouse slip this was played over the board uh now karpov just goes back knight to the e6 and the opportunity uh, is no longer present so here queen captures an e5 d captures now rook to e3 going after the pawn now knight d4 uh, putting pressure on the bishop and on the pawn the rook now defends the e5 pawn and now again if you throw this into any engine it will give you a 0 0 0 but still you have to now play an equal endgame against Anatoly Karpov which is not a walk in the park so rook to d3 uh, rook to b8 putting pressure on the pawn here uh, rook to e3 now uh, white also wants to pick up the e5 pawn and Karpov defends it with f6 we have bishop to e4 uh, now hoping for Karpov to blunder because if you capture now with rook captures on b3 just bishop d5 check and you lose the game so Karpov of course plays king to f8 uh, not only does he uh, evades check but he also starts bringing his king into the game which is a very important segment of the end game so bishop to d5 now defending his pawn and now king e7 so it's a um, Pretty equal endgame. Uh, the thing is, this is a passed pawn, but uh, with uh, Karpov's king being closer to the passed pawn than White's king, it's uh, more of a weakness than a strength. So here, bishop c4, king to d6, we have rook to d3, and now king to c5. We have g3, uh, and now rook to a8. Now trying to infiltrate the position, uh, we have rook, king to g2, and now rook to a1. Uh, we have rook to d2 and now king to b4. So getting deeper and deeper into the position with the king. And now, again, it's a very difficult position, especially with uh, seconds on the clock. Uh, here, bishop to g8 was played, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's sort of a trick, trying to trick Karpov into, into doing something that would be bad for him. Uh, but it, it's also just a completely winning position now for Karpov. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find this incredible winning idea for Karpov while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not capturing the pawn, because if you capture the pawn, you just give white all the counterplay. Uh, he goes after the king side pawns, and that's it. You will not be winning this game. And if you try to save the pawn, just check, and then the knight falls, and then you're, you're already lost. So here, king to c3 is the move. Congratulations to everyone who found this. You are, uh, you know, an, an excellent uh, uh, player of end games. And here, uh, the rook is trapped. The rook has nowhere to go, covered by the rook, covered by the knight, knight and king, king and rook, and that's just it. Those are all the squares that, that the rook can use. So here, uh, capturing maybe on e5 can be played, but uh, instead Enigma played rook to e2, and now Karpov just captured that rook. Uh, we have king to f3, knight back to d4, king to e4, and now rook to a2. Now, you're probably wondering why is Enigma continuing this game? He is down a rook. Well, uh, well, there's also time, the time factor. If Karpov's uh, clock runs out, then Enigma wins the game. So he's trying to flag Karpov here. We have f3, uh, rook to f2 now. We have f4, uh, rook to f3. So maybe even some checkmating, uh, checkmating ideas are, are possible here, but it's not um, uh, at all clear how is Karpov supposed to do this? So here we have f5, uh, and now rook captures on g3. We have king to d5, he's trying to run away and keep the game going. Rook captures on g4, bishop to h7, and now rook to f4. Uh, we have bishop to g6, now just knight captures on f5. So as long as Karpov uh, wins all of the pieces and pawns, and white is left only with a king, he can no longer lose the game. Even if his time runs out, uh, it's still uh, only a draw. So here, king c6, knight to d4 check, we have king to d7, and now e4. Karpov now also starts pushing his pass pawn, bishop to h5, white is ready to give up the bishop for the pass pawn, e3, bishop to d1, and now e2. Now the bishop has to be given, captures, captures, and now b4, 
uh, king captures on b4 and now king to e7. So here, Karpov is of course completely winning, uh, but he still has to deliver checkmate, otherwise he might, uh, well, he can't lose on time, but the game can end in a draw. So king c5, king to f7, and now rook to g4, cutting off the white king, king to e6, and now king to d4. We have king to f5, now comes h5. Uh, king to e6, we have knight to g3, taking away the f5 square from the king, king d7, king d5, king to c7, and now rook to b4, cutting off the uh, the white king, so king d7, rook to b7, check, king to c8, king to c6 now, and what can white play? Well, king to d8, now Karpov goes after him, we have king to e8, king to e6, king to f8, and here, king to a7 was played, uh, Karpov needs only a few more moves to, to deliver checkmate, but it was in this position, on move 83, that uh, Karpov's time ran out, uh, with uh, Ray Enigma having only one second on the clock, uh, and that means that the game ends in a draw so uh really really impressive stuff for, from ray enigma whoever he is uh he really tried to flag karpov he he gave it uh, his best but it's incredible that that karpov um, you know even at this age he he still plays three minute blitz games with uh, uh with such uh, such precision okay he did make that one uh, little uh lapse in judgment but uh you know uh, it, uh only one in a three minute blitz game that's that's really that's really perfectly fine. It's it's hard uh, to uh, also uh, imagine why why Enigma missed that rook to rook to e three move, but you know it, it happens. I guess it was just too much uh, lights, too much uh, flashing, too much explosions, too much everything. There, there was even fire on stage. Uh, do check it out. The link is in the description below. It's incredibly intense. If you if you thought this was intense, you, you will you know th this will completely blow your mind. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Like I said, if you know who he is, don't share it with everyone. Let it remain a mystery for, for as long as possible because the world uh, needs, um, well, needs definitely such such a character. Uh, so yeah, once again, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. And yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, as soon as uh, this position was reached, Karpov's time uh, ran out and he said tablas, which is, as I understand it, a draw in Spanish. So uh, Karpov first uh, mentioned it. I thought it was really funny since uh, Enigma was Spanish. Uh, so yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank uh, Frank Combs, uh, Kalatin Akun, uh, Francis Air, Weaver Sky Music, and Emanuel Freitzel for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage uh, of everything uh, else that's happening in the chess world, and as usual, checking up on your wonderful suggestions. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.